Hello and welcome to the first Good Coding Practice video for the GeoPython course. As mentioned as part of the course, one of the ideas we want to do is introduce you not only to how to program using the Python programming language, but also to some practical tips, some best practices from people that are professional programmers and things that we feel would benefit you if you learn them right from the start of your experience. The first of these practices is related to choosing good variable names, which might seem like a topic that doesn't really deserve much attention, but can actually make quite a bit of difference in making your programs easy to understand, not only for other people who see them, but also for yourself. And we want to start with an example here in this video about choosing variable names that are perhaps not so good. So let's consider a case where we have variable that should refer to the identification number of something like a meteorological station. You might in haste start writing out the name of this uh, variable as something simple like the station should be simply s equals and then some string that refers to the identifier for that station such as 101533. This is an actual Finnish meteorological station ID, but the variable name S is not necessarily carrying that information for us. And if you improve that and make it something like SID, it isn't really a whole lot better. Even you yourself, if you took a few weeks away from looking at the code, would probably come back and go, right, what did S stand for again? These are too short as variable names to actually carry any meaningful information in this case. It doesn't really tell us anything more than what the number is to the right of it. Let's consider another example. Imagine now that we had a variable that had a more descriptive name, such as Finnish, meteorological, state institute, observation, station, identification number equals the same number 101533. Obviously this is a much more descriptive variable name but no better. The reason here of course is that this is cumbersome as you just saw even me typing it in took a bit of time and so as a variable name although the description is here it's far too long to be usable, and the way that it's written also doesn't make it very easy to understand. So making it longer alone isn't going to solve the problem. So let's talk for just a second about what makes a good variable name. First off, a good variable name should be clear and it should be concise. So it should be relatively short. It shouldn't be 70 characters long or something like that. A good variable name should also be written in English, even though there are many different languages, uh, spoken languages that are used among people in the course. A general good practice for variable names is to write them in English because that's the most common language that's used in programming and will be most accessible to other programmers in that way. So things like the variable name Mutuya in Finnish, the name for the word variable might be appealing, uh, which is bad on a number of other levels as well. We should avoid choosing Finnish names for the variable names, even though you yourself are the one who's going to be looking at the code. Mainly, you may end up sharing some parts of it. So, In addition, your variable names should not contain any special characters. So if you were to choose something like Lampadilla, then this might be a meaningful word to you, but the special characters in here could be problematic in certain environments where non-standard characters may not be supported. So you should only use kind of standard ASCII characters um, when providing your variable names. Finally, a good variable name shouldn't conflict with any Python keywords. So you shouldn't use the word true with a capital T or false with a capital F as a variable name, something like and or if. These have designated functions in Python and should not be used as variable names. So we have a few good ideas here and we have some suggestions of things to avoid. So let's think about this now, what can we do? Well, it turns out there's a few different formats for variable names that are already uh, widely used and are meaningful for our purposes. The first is called pothole case naming. In this style of variable naming, essentially you have the different words that comprise the name of the variable separated by underscores and everything is written in lowercase text. 
in this way, it's actually quite readable and fairly compact as well. So we could take our variable name we had before, our Meteorological uh, Institute Station Identification, and call that something like FMI Station ID. And then again, we could set that to 101533 as we had before. Now clearly, this is easy to read, it conveys a little bit more information, and it's not that much longer to type out. So this style of naming is quite clear, it's concise, and uh, this would actually be the recommended format for variable names for those of you who are new in programming um, and, and in this course. Another alternative is to use something called camel case. Camel case uses uh, capitalization to separate words, so rather than underscores, you can use capital letters. So in this case, we could think of something like FMI station ID equals, again, same 101533. Or an alternative format for this, if we wanted to uh, make it a little bit easier to read, is simply to say station ID. If the program is otherwise clear about what kind of station you're using, that could be an alternative name. And you can see again that by using capitalization here, it makes the variable name relatively easy to read. So overall, our suggestion would be to consider using the pothole case naming standard. Uh, I think that's probably the most common uh, format used in Python programming. And, um, and I think personally and, and other instructors in the course, I think, feel the same way, that that's the easiest format to read. So that's it for our very brief uh, good coding practice video on the topic of selecting good variable names. And uh, we hope that this information will be beneficial to you when you start writing your programs by choosing good variable names right from the beginning.